I would like to share some of the animations and pictures from the RPD program so you can see some of the exceptional resources that are available to enhance learning. For instance, you can see a circumferential class flexing over the surface of a tooth. You can see an eye bar class flexing over the contour of the tooth and into its undercut on the mesiofacial aspect of the tooth. You can see a guide plane with the proximal plate portion of the framework contacting that guiding plane and guiding the removable partial denture into place. There are many clasp assemblies that animations have been created to show how those particular assemblies function and the various components compared to the red survey line. So here we can see an RPA where the entire clasp assembly is located apical to the survey line. A wrought wire clasp, it can flex and therefore dissipate some of the stress. If there were bone resorption present and the base did not fit, you can see the effect of torquing. Different major connectors are demonstrated. Here a lingual bar and then the next most common type of major connector in the mandible is a lingual plate. So you can show the component, you can show the contours on the teeth that were created to support that, the proximal plate for an eye bar clasp assembly. The reciprocation for an eye bar comes from the lingual aspect of the proximal plate as it wraps around the corner of the tooth. And this animation shows that, as well as this one, where the guide plane located apical to the mesial rest also provides reciprocation through the minor connector. And if the minor connector going to the rest seat contacts the tooth in front of it, it creates a wedging effect that defeats the purpose of the IBAR or RPI system. You can see the benefit of having a reciprocal clasp located on the lingual surface. Therefore, the facial clasp does not torque the tooth by tipping it lingually. And the benefit of having a positive rest seat on the uh, facial surface so that it does not tip the tooth as would occur if you had a rest just contacting a sloping lingual surface. And then the presence of a fulcrum line can be demonstrated by showing the red line and how the removable partial denture can rotate around the fulcrum line. And in this example, the indirect retainer can be used as a guide to determine when the removable partial denture might need to be relined. Here a carbide burr being used to prepare parallel guide planes on this particular cast as a demonstration as to how you would like to have those guide planes formed. And then that same instrument being used to create guide planes on a molar that's tipped mesially and lingually, creating that guide plane while preserving a distolingual undercut where the clasp can flex into that area and retain the removable partial denture. There's an occlusion section that shows anterior guided occlusal relationship. It shows chewing from a lateral and frontal view, as well as becoming transparent so that you can see that the condyles do not stay in the fossa during chewing. <clears throat> An incredible animation of the temporomandibular joint in its normal functional activity. And there are various animations related to a rotational path removable partial denture, how it would be seated. And in this particular example, the anterior to posterior type of rotational path removable partial denture where there's no clasp anteriorly and it rotates around the anterior aspect of the long rest that extends toward the mesial aspect of the canine with the clasp located on the posterior tooth. And a very unique animation showing a swing lock removable partial denture. Not a commonly made prosthesis, but this book contains a chapter 
that explains all the details should somebody choose to use this type of a RPD design. And then some samples from over 3,000 color pictures just to show polished, removable partial denture bases, what they ought to look like. Here a waxed base, internal and external finish lines that they are not located over each other, the different types of resin base retention, a lingual bar major connector, and there are all sorts of pictures showing three views of all the major clasp assemblies, even cross-sectional views to show uh, different clasp assemblies, the crown contours that you need to produce, and the location of the lingual bar. The chapter on digital design shows a number of different RPD designs. And then there's hundreds of clinical pictures present that show a variety of things from rest seats to different clasp assemblies to different bases used as well as implants used below the bases of removable partial dentures a series of pre and post treatment pictures to show nice results so I hope that this brief journey through the visual resources gives you a perspective regarding the exceptional learning opportunities that are available in this unique one-of-a-kind program.